Okay, so for this instructional video, we're going to focus on designing for fashion design and how you draw out different things that you might want to make. So for this, you don't create one final picture of a product. You're going to create a, a bit of a storyboard, a sketch of different designs you may have in your head. So let's think of, for example, if I was going to design a shoe, All right? And there's actually a competition that if you watch the other videos in my Google Classroom, you may have seen that if you design your own vans when you get into high school, there's a competition every year for the best design, and it has a $50,000 reward that goes with it. So it's very much worthwhile. So the first thing I would do if I were you is to draw out the basic shape of whatever kind of shoe you want to do. Um, if it's a slip-on shoe, you can leave without laces. If it's a shoe with laces, you want to draw the eye holes. That's what we call those. They're eyes that go down your shoe. Now, a lot of the newer sneaker brands design these to be interesting all by themselves. Sometimes they design a different piece, like a piece of leather or a piece of a separate fabric to actually hold some of those holes. So that it's a more interesting looking shoe than it might be otherwise. Um, a lot of fashion designers think on a theme so they don't just randomly start drawing. They have an idea in mind when they begin. So you might want to think of what your theme for your brand would be. What kind of look you're going for. Or maybe what kind of person is wearing your shoe. So I'm, my theme would probably be an art teacher. That's who I am. That's what I think like, so that's probably what it would be. So I would want this shoe to be something I could wear at school. So I need it to be sturdy. I need it to be easy to clean. I need it to be interesting looking because I've noticed that my kids notice everything. They notice what shoes I wear. They notice when I get my hair cut, even if I don't even pay attention. Um, one day I wore two different socks to school and I had on long pants and I couldn't even see my socks. But one of my kids knew that I had on two different socks that day. And so like... I need something that's worth looking at as the art teacher. So what I'm going to think about is first big basic shapes. And this reminds me of like a blob of paint splattered across the shoe. I love that idea. And I don't need that little line. You're not going to do it perfect the first time. You're going to mess up. You're going to need to retry and do it again. And don't worry about that. Everybody does that. No designer starts off perfectly the very first time. I want those reinforced heels like that, but I want it to also have that kind of blob look. So I'm going to make it blob out right there. And you know the shoes that have the design that carries into the sole of the shoe? I like that idea. I don't want it to be overwhelming, but I just want a little bit of that drippiness to carry over into the sole of the shoe. All right, so there's my basic design. Now I have to think about what else can I incorporate in this shoe. If I've got holes, I need laces. So when you're drawing your laces, draw a curve that stops when it hits the top of your shoe. And then erase any lines that you see through it. And it'll actually look like a lace tied into your shoe. Helps a little bit. Make it look a little more realistic. If you want one of those shoes that has no ties, I know there's some shoes where they have the laces, but they don't actually tie at the top. They're elastic, so they just stretch and let your shoe, you put your foot in. That works for me too, whatever you want it to be. A lot of fashion designers will label what type of things they want to use. So for example, I may say I want rainbow laces, right? I may show that this is going to just have I've seen people do this with their shoes. I thought it was really smart when they don't want to tie their shoes every day. They just have a knot at the end of their shoes. And they don't have to tie their shoe every day. And it just stays in place. And it stays fitted to their foot. So you can write little notes on it. That's a lot of what fashion designers do. I would want this to be washable. Stain resistant. Because that matters to me. Again, I'm an art teacher. There's stuff on my shoes all the time. This last year it was plaster. I ruined three pairs of shoes with plaster. So I want something that I could just take a Clorox wipe to and wipe it off and it's all good. Now I do know that they might not be doable for the whole shoe. 
But if I could get it on the whole shoe, and this is my design, I get to do whatever I want. I want that. I want it just to be a great shoe for an art teacher. Um, I like the idea of a texture back here, a pattern. If you want a pattern of any kind, you need to draw it on there. Don't just assume that the people who would make your shoe for you would know. You've got to show what you want. And I want my pattern to be black and white so that this blob of bright paint on my shoe would stand out more. All right, so you've got to take notes in these sketches. You can't just draw a cute shoe or a cute bag or a cute earring. You've got to plan out what you actually were thinking when you make these. Now, there's also the option of adding color to these. You don't have to. You could just take notes and tell me what color you would do if. But if you have a set of markers or a set of color pencils around and you want to add color to it, by all means, have at it. So I have a few markers. And so I might come through here. And there are two way, different ways that I've seen folks do this for, for fashion design. Sometimes they do like this, and they'll draw a little circle, and they'll make a little cutout, and they'll do color samples. And they'll show you what they're thinking. And they may use markers, they may use watercolors, they may use anything to kind of give you that idea of what they want. And I layer my markers on top of each other so you can kind of see a blend in colors. So I didn't just have blue and purple. I have blue, blue, violet, and purple. And then I'm going to add a red, which will also make a red violet. Right? So I could show that I want this gradation of color in there. You can also just color directly on the shoe. doesn't hurt anything. But think about the direction you want that color to flow. How far up the shoe you want the color to go? Is there a certain part of the shoe where that color is going to stop? And wherever it stops, you really want it to make sense. Like, I don't want to just cut the shoe in half and make half blue, half red. Not for my design. I want the colors to kind of blend and fade into each other. So I want to follow the natural organic shape of this shoe with my color. Right? And then... I will come back in and figure out how much of this color I want to keep where. But I want this shape to exist, this nice flowy look. Now, I'm going to admit to you, I have never designed shoes before. This is not my thing. I'm an art teacher. I'm not a fashion designer. So you may look at my shoes at the end of this and go, oh my gosh, those are ugly. I would never wear those shoes. You know what? That's fine. Not everything you design is perfect the first time. So look at it. See if you need to adjust it, tweak it, change it, move it. And then you always can come up with a second design or a third design. This is not a finished product. It's a process. So you need to think about how to change, how to adjust. One of the skills of this career is to be able to take criticism. So you want to be able to deal with, okay, this didn't work. What do I do next? So always remember, you can just try again. doesn't hurt anything. And then I'm going to add my last color here. Now, I don't love the blend I got there, so I'm not going to use too much of it, where I did like the blend on the blue and the purple. So I'm going to avoid that a little bit by not overlapping as much. All right, so now I've got this nice fade on my shoes of color to color. All right, I like that. And what I've decided now is with this look, how I have the black and white back here, I want that same thing carried through the front of my shoes. I want that black and white fabric in the front of my shoes. So I just take notes. That's all you have to do. This is a sketch. It's a plan. So take notes. Explain what's happening because this is what real artists do. This is what real fashion designers do. It's not a perfect drawing every time. It's not absolutely finished every time. And I told you, you could submit these to programs like Vans and design your own shoes. Um, the people who win get prize money for themselves. Sometimes they get prize money for their art programs at their schools. I know there's, this is going to sound crazy, but there's scholarships. The duct tape brand has a scholarship every year. When you're a senior, you can participate and you make a prom dress out of duct tape. 
sounds crazy. A girl in my school did it my senior year and she made one when the art teacher helped. I'm sure if you just talk to your art teacher and explain what you're doing, they would be happy to help you out. But you just buy a bunch of duct tape and you make a complete dress out of it or suit. She, The girl I remember made a suit for the date she was taking to prom and then she had her dress and she entered the competition and it gives you a scholarship of a few, I think it was $10,000 that year. I don't know if that's changed, but I have an attachment to that in the Google Classroom if you're interested in entering a competition like that. So there's things out there to help you out. All right, so if this is my finished design, this is what I want to do. I'm going to add any details I want. Add any notes to help me remember what I was thinking. All right, and then that's done. And that's my design for my shoe. So you can come up with a shoe design, a purse, jewelry, clothes, fabric. If you're interested in drawing for um, like a full outfit, look at the figure drawing lessons that are also posted so that you can get an idea of how to draw the human figure before you try to put clothes on them.